Okay, today I'm going to show you a little routine that I get patients to do when they've got a rotator cuff tear. So it's usually a supraspinatus tear. Sometimes those tears can be different. They can be a subscap or infraspinatus, but we're going to focus on more of a supraspinatus tear. And these patients, after the acute phase and after a bit of treatment, they're very, very weak through that tendon and they've got a few movements that are a real problem. Most of those movements are long lever movements, so they have problems with things like this. So if you've got a rotator cuff tear that's been diagnosed on a scan or the physio has diagnosed it, you'll have problems trying to do this, okay? So abduction, a long lever. So that movement there will be painful and there's no point when you're acute, when that initial stage is when it's quite weak, is trying to strengthen it like this. It's not going to work. It's going to be too painful and there's too much load. Just simply from the fact that that long lever here through abduction is too much load through that tendon point. So we've got to work on different exercises to try and beef up and strengthen up around that joint while the tear is sort of healing if you like and everything's strengthening up around it and we've got to make sure things don't fall apart because the first thing that's going to go with the shoulder is your posture so all the scapular muscles tend to sort of turn off and let go because of the pain and the injury and then everything tightens up and that's why people go to the physio to try and loosen it up because the deltoid starts getting really stiff and sore you're getting trigger points all through here and all that gets released off and that gives you relief but you've got to do all your homework because otherwise you're going to just wait and wait and wait and wait lots and lots of treatment and then get weaker and weaker and weaker and then have to do so much rehab it's crazy so what we try and get people doing is rehab early in that early stage but we've got to be very careful how much load we do so that load is no good the other load is no good is going forward so that long lever forward and you'll find people with rotator cuff tears they can't lift forward like that so they can't lift a dumbbell or swing a kettlebell especially in that rotated position there that might be a bit easier but this position is no good um, and they also struggle to try and do a bicep curl because as they lift up the load through the shoulder where that rotator cuff needs to stabilize that head in the in the, hum the humeral head in the socket that load gives them pain as well so we've got to be careful how many things we do so first one we're going to work on is a scapular plank because we need to work on our scapula so what I'm going to get you people doing Sometimes this position here is too much load because it's that long lever. So what you can do is go down into a plank, which allows you to work on your core a little bit, is go into the plank here. Now, I like getting people starting on their knees, so they go into this position here. Now, don't, don't do that way because it's internally rotated, so try and keep even there. And keep your pelvis in neutral there, all right? And then you're trying to just go into a scapular retraction. Be careful of that pain in the shoulder and then push away now this is quite hard because it requires you to do quite a bit of movement and then you'll feel like you don't have much movement in there okay now this is a short lever scapular plank which is nice and safe you just gotta be careful going in and out when you've got that rotator cuff tear now that load through the joint gives you that compression and gets those postural muscles stabilizing to help you with stability. And usually when you've, after you've done something like that, you feel a little bit better, everything feels a bit more switched on, but you haven't loaded up that rotator cuff tissue. You've switched on everything else. So that's a good one to do. Obviously you can progress into um, a long lever scapular plank if you can, but some people don't like it. So that's one. Now, if you want to advance that and put more load through the joint, if there's no pain, you just simply go from the knees to straight onto here. So when you're doing a full plank, keeping those glutes on, down into there, so your whole body goes down and into there, okay? So down and up, okay? Be careful with that one. But that's a really nice one to switch on all your scap the stability mechanisms, okay? So that's your press part. I'd also do a pull part. Now, what you can do with one arm, you can use a TRX like this, okay? It's a TRX one. And I like doing, starting off with two arms. So this is what we call closed chain. Now, staying closed chain, like at the bottom, is much kinder on a rotator cuff tear. So if you can, if you've got the equipment, stay closed chain rather than open chain, okay? So this one, the angle will determine how much load you've got. Again, you've got to be careful because 
that rotator cuff's holding that joint there, you don't want it yanking out of the socket. So at this point here, just be careful how much load you put through here, straight arms, and you're not going to do a row, you're just going to scapula retract, and you just got to be careful how much you drop down through here. Now, obviously, the lower I go, the more load it is, okay, the harder it is. Now, that's two arm, okay, so you can start that as a bit of a warm up, but it's not going to teach you one arm strength, which is what you need for this rotator cuff. So what I would do is go down to one, but be careful how much angle you do. So you go back into one, keep that arm straight, keep your body square, and you're not going to row with the elbow, okay? Just the shoulder blade, and be careful this part here, make sure it goes forward, Hold that, keep that control on there, and pull back. Now, if you notice, I'm externally rotated in that shoulder joint. I'm not that way, okay? I want to be this way. So not internally rotated, externally rotated there, so it's nice and safe here. And just work on that movement there. Don't over pull or overreach with that. Okay, and that's your closed chain, one arm, scapular row and that's got to be done before the pull through okay because when you pull through the, the stability you need is higher in the joint if you've got a rotator cuff tear you may not have it and that may cause aggravation that's when people do their exercise and then at night it hurts again and aches and they get nowhere so make sure you're just staying with the straight arm scapular row really important one okay so next thing i have to look at my notes here is your abduction isometric. Now I talked about how when you've got a tear, even up to six to 12 weeks, you'll find that doing this is too hard and too sore, okay? So what I get people doing is isometric abduction, okay? Because you've still got to get that muscle turning on. If you don't do anything with it, it's gonna atrophy and weaken and become a massive problem. So we've got to keep it alive. So what I want you working on is abduction isometric. So you, what you do is, this is long lever, short lever. Okay, so start with the short lever, meaning the elbow is bent, so there's only this section here you are working on. So I'm gonna push against the pole here, and I'm gonna push my elbow outwards until I feel that turn on. Now I don't want pain with this. So you have gotta get that shoulder in the right position, push that way, until you feel that sort of turn on, you go, ooh, okay, if I went any further, that's gonna hurt. And you need to hold that there for a good 10 seconds. I like getting people going from 10 seconds to 15 to 20 to 30, up to 30 seconds, holding that out there, and then releasing off. Okay, of course you can do the other side. When you get better at it, do a long lever, okay? So then pushing isometrically that way into there, and winding it up until you're just about to feel that load through there, okay? Now, of course, to advance that, you can go further into range and pushing us, but that's getting hard, okay? So start with nice and close. Keep it safe, nice and close. Like I said, do the isometric work before you do any lever like that, all right? So that's your abduction. You have to do external rotation. Now, your external rotation, even though, say you've got a supraspinatus tear, and that's, yes, it's a stabilized, and, and it's, you know, secondary movement is abduction, you still feel it on external rotation. And when we test people for a rotator cuff tear, you test them in an isometric external rotation, they'll feel the pain. So you need to strengthen it, but you've got to be clever. So what I would get you doing, actually, let's loosen that up a bit, have a long band. Now, this is red. When you've got a green one, now, in your country, in Australia, red is easier than a green, but in some countries it's a little bit different. But just look at the thickness of the band, okay? So, thicker the band, harder it is. So the red one is a, what we call a medium, and the green one's a firm. The next little level down there is yellow, but it's really, really skinny, okay? So if you can, start with a medium, but have it long. The long band with a little bit of tension, it's a bit easier. Now, with your external rotation, that usually hurts straight away with, it, with a rotator cuff tear. And there's no point doing heaps of this to try and strengthen up if it's painful or if it hurts afterwards. So we try and work on the eccentric part with a really strong grip. So meaning, I'm gonna assist that out, get myself in position, take the load off, and if I can handle that load in there, and that doesn't hurt, 
So I can let that internally rotate and it doesn't hurt, then I'm good, okay? If it does hurt, I have to then have some assistance going inwards. So there's some load through there. I'm giving the, the tissue a little bit of load, but not so much that it's gonna really aggravate it and make that tear and more inflamed or worse, okay? Like I said, you've gotta do something, but be careful you don't do too much. So the eccentric part, which is that part, if you can, if you can't, then you assist it inwards as well. So there's some load, sort of none on the way out, some load on the way in, okay? And doing that over a period of weeks will build up some sort of muscle bulk, some sort of muscle strengthening. So by the time you're sort of healing and things are getting better, everything's settling down, you're slowly creeping in the strength. So then hopefully you can get to the point where, oh, it's better and I can start working on some real strengthening going out by doing concentric, eccentric work like that, and then up and higher and higher and higher. But like I said, all this, is your acute stage or, or very, it's just straight after treatment. The first of the things we try and get people doing to get things working, get things activated, and keep things switched on. Okay, now, the last one uh, is always my favorite is extension. Now, you shouldn't have any pain with this, so if you do, it's either too early, okay, or you probably need a little bit more treatment, but extension is this one here, okay? Now, most people will feel fine with that. It's the it's the, ab, it's the abduction and, and, the, and the going forward is the problem. The extension is usually fine. Now, extension will get your rear delt and a little bit of your rotator cuff at the back, which will help out. Now, the more you can beef up the strengthening work here, so the more work you can do here in that part and a bit of tricep, the happier that shoulder feels, the more switched on it feels. Then it's almost a bit of a pain reliever. So some people get, you know, if they've got a rotator cuff here, they'll get into the ball and they'll try and release that muscle off because that muscle's tightening up to compensate. If you can exercise and strengthen up the back to help the side where that rotator cuff tear is, then you'll just feel better day to day. You'll be able to do more with your arm, do more work with your arm with, that, with less pain and go into your next training session a little bit better. So I'd always do your extension to help out and give you a bit more strengthening work so you can do everything else that's really targeting that rotator cuff tear. So there's my top ones, okay, for a rotator cuff tear, namely supraspinatus, that is in that acute stage. So the first few exercises you're gonna work on to keep by your time while you're seeing the physio, while you're working on trying to let it settle out rather than complete rest. Sometimes you have to do a bit of rest initially, but this is where you gotta start somewhere and then build to normal rehab exercises that you can do after the pain, okay? See you next time.